Hi, my name is Aisha. When I was 16, I was forced to live in a bubble while I watched my life crumble around me. Friends lied to me, doctors lied to me, and I barely made it out alive. It all started on the day I finally got to go meet Milo's family. Milo was probably the most handsome guy in school, and we'd been dating for a while. When he invited me over to meet his family, I'd figured we'd become official. I was more nervous than I had ever been. About halfway through dinner, I felt my throat start to close up. I figured maybe it was the nerves, but it started becoming harder to breathe. I looked at my plate trying to figure out what had happened. I wasn't allergic to anything, so obviously that wasn't it. The whole night, I tried to nod and pretend everything was okay. Milo had mentioned a million times he didn't like drama, and my little reaction wasn't that big of a deal, right? I could make it through dinner. Wrong. Absolutely wrong. Within 30 minutes, my tongue was so swollen I couldn't talk. It was spilling out of my mouth. I started gasping for breath as everyone around the table started screaming. All these people I was trying to impress were gawking at me like I had 20 heads. I blacked out completely. When I woke up, I was in the hospital. They explained I had had a seizure because of something I ate. According to Milo, I threw up everywhere. All over his mom's nice tablecloth, her floor, myself. I was mortified. What had I eaten? The doctors ran allergy tests on me and my entire body swelled up. Every time they gave me medicine to try and calm me down, I was blacking out and having seizures. When I woke up at the end of the day, I realized I was in a sterile glass box. A new doctor, Dr. Anderson, came over to the box and told me what was going on. From what she could tell, I was allergic to air. I was going to have to live in this box for the next couple of weeks. I wouldn't be allowed to use a normal bathroom without wearing a helmet there. I wasn't allowed to hug my friends, my family, not even Milo. I felt like an animal in a zoo. Some friends from school came to visit, but they had to stand outside the box and talk into a speaker so I could hear them. I thought it was kind of nice that all these people I barely knew cared enough to visit me. But then I found out the truth. A bunch of people had posted photos online making fun of me. Luckily, Milo was in there with me almost every day. Even after I embarrassed myself in front of his family, he wanted me. Even though I couldn't touch him or hug him, or even have a private conversation with him, he wanted me. But soon, things started changing with Milo. Over the next few days, I noticed he was wearing nicer clothes. Like, way nicer clothes. He was wearing $1,000 watches on both wrists and sporting $1,000 shoes. When I asked him about it, he told me his mom had taken him shopping. Then he stopped coming to the hospital as much. At night, I would text and call him and get no answer. When I texted one of my friends about it, she asked if she could come to see me in person. She sat down and told me the truth. He had a sugar mama. Everyone knew it. I couldn't believe it. That night when Dr. Anderson was trying to run tests, she stopped to ask if I was okay. Through tears, I explained what was going on. I was stuck here, super sick, and my boyfriend was off with some cougar. Dr. Anderson told me I needed to let him go, but I told her I just wasn't ready. A few days later, I knew I had to see Milo. He wasn't answering my texts or calls. It was against the rules for me to leave my bubble, but I just had to see him. His house was within walking distance. If I could just get out. I opened my bubble and stepped into the hall. That's when I saw it. Milo was standing there, and Dr. Anderson had her hands on his shoulders, holding him close. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Milo's sugar mama was my doctor? I don't know if it was the shock or the disease, but I immediately couldn't breathe. I fell on the floor and Dr. Anderson rushed over, trying to help me to my feet. Within a few minutes, I woke up on an operating table. Dr. Anderson explained they were going to run a few tests, but I started screaming at her. I yelled at her for hooking up with my boyfriend and for telling me to break up with him. All the surgical technicians were shocked. Dr. Anderson stopped what she was doing and explained she had been telling Milo he had to leave because he was bad for my mental health. So, who's the sugar mama? Later that day, I messaged my friend and asked, but she didn't have an answer. She did have a question for me, though. How's the treatment for your cancer? When she realized how confused I was, she added, 
the one that Milo was raising funds for? Suddenly, it all made sense. Milo didn't have some cougar paying his bills. He had been using my disease and my pain to fill his pockets. That day, I called Milo out on social media, broke up with him, and filed a police report. From what I heard, he got arrested and had to return all the money to everyone who donated. Fortunately, all these people just wanted the right thing. They wanted the money to go to me. It helped fund more treatment for me, and I finally found out that I have mast cell disease, an autoimmune disease where my body is allergic to almost everything. The disease made me realize that the people who genuinely love me will be there for me during my darkest moments. It almost cost me my life chasing after someone who clearly didn't care about me. Now, I'm proud to say I only give my energy to people who really respect me. Did you like this story? Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to Dear Diary as we post new stories every week.